Okay. So I wanted to add something to the year. Last year was two weeks ago. Last week we took off. So we have to resume to remember where we're off to. And what I wanted to comment, one thing, two comments rather, on the first two psukim of Perak Mem Beis, which we learned from last year, and after that we'll move on to Kasa Gimel. First point is like this. Perak Mem Beis, Pasuk Aleph says, Vayar Yaakov ki yesh shever v'mitzrayim. Yaakov saw that there was shever, which means grain. And the Medr says that <coughs> shever alludes to the fact that Yaakov saw that there was sever, which means hope, in Mitzrayim. Because the Pasuk says until him, Kuf mem vav ashrei shekel Yaakov be'ezroi sivroi al Hashem alikov. Okay. So Yaakov saw that there was shever, means Yaakov saw that there was sever, there was hope. One thing we mentioned already was that, based on the fact that Mizmor Kuf Mem Zayin has all the allusions to this parasha, it's very appropriate that Mizmor Kuf Mem Vav was also an allusion. But I realized, furthermore, that um, there's another basis, very strong basis for Chazal, saying that Shever is an allusion to Sever, and, that, and doing this wordplay. And that's because of the following. We've been discussing, we discussed in the last year, I'm just going to say this briefly, I'm not going to review it all. Um, we've been discussing the fact that the brothers who sold Yosef lost their ability to see prophetically. And that is <coughs> expressed in, in that Pasuk that says, after the Shvatim, after they put Yosef in the bar, the Pasuk says, They picked up their eyes and they saw and the Pasuk describes what they saw. And as we discussed numerous times, it says in Amos Perek uh, Ches, I think it was, or Tes, I remember now, that Amos was tested, Amos the Navi was tested to see whether he has the good prophetic vision, right? And he was presented with a basket full of summer fruit, which he correctly identified as a Klub Kites. I'm just going to do this for kids, because this is just two points, so I'll just say it quickly. He correctly identified it as a Klub Kites. This is actually Perek Ches. Yes. Right? And Kluv Kites contain a message, Kites means summer food, but Kites also alludes to Kates. And the message was, the end is nigh, your sins are too severe to bear. And specifically, there's allusions there to the selling of Yosef. And middle of the Shvatim too, when they picked up their eyes and saw the summer fruits, they were supposed to recognize it as a Kluv Kites, but they didn't. Instead, they saw, as the Pasuk describes what they saw, and that's indicating that they lost their ability to have proper vision. And then in this Pasuk, so without going into the Pasuk again, but there's this conversation between Yaakov and his children where he saw something and he said to them, how come you're <coughs> doing something different than I am? And we discussed in the last year that Yaakov was able to see something which they were not able to see. And this is indicating that Yaakov had the power of vision which they had lost. Okay, so now this is exactly brings us to Chazak. If they lost the power of seeing things and unscrambling them, right? We see in Amos, it's very interesting, with the Raman points out in the Maribuchim, that there's this element of Nevuah, where the Navi sees an item, he see, whether he sees it in real life or it appears in his mind, doesn't necessarily matter. He sees something, and that word can be unscrambled to mean something else, and that's one of the methods that Nevuah works. So the Shvatim, who lost their ability to see the Kluv Kites and understand it's a Rebus to Kates. And they're unlike Yaakov, who saw, who did see, and he saw Shever. So if we read that all together, then that means we're supposed to scramble Shever and see the meaning of Shever based on this kind of interpretation or illusion where one word alludes to something else, and boom, that's where Chazal find it. Okay, look in that Mizmar. Sivrael Hashem Alekov. That's the illusion of the Shever. So the Shvatan saw something incorrectly, the Yaakov saw something correctly, he saw Shever, which is an allusion to Sever, and they, they use that Pasuk to support that. So, like all Mitzrash Chazal, it's all um, clear from putting together all the Pesukim Tanakh. Okay, one more comment I just want to say, I think we'll deal with this briefly too, because <clears throat> it's very complicated. Um, just one thing here. Yaakov saw that there's Shever, And 
um, so Yaakov sensed something that the brothers didn't see, and he sensed that Yosef is the source of the food, essentially. Now, of course, the competition about who, whether Yosef is the source of the food or not begins in Pashat Yeshev, where Yosef has dreams about the Sade, and he's ma'alma ma'alumim b'chayich ha-sade, and of course, that indicates that he believes he has the power over the food, and the brothers believe he doesn't, and that he's being ambitious, Whatever happening, whatever's happening here in, in the Vayesha. Um, but ultimately, of course, Yosef does control the food. Now, how does Yaakov see that if he doesn't know that Yosef is still alive? So he sees, he has some sense. And that's what the Bedrashim point out. Rashi says that already, that the Pasuk says, Vayar Yaakov, and the next Pasuk says, Shamati, mm-hmm. because it's saying some sort of like half, half divination, like a somewhat of a, of a, of a heightened re'ia. But not a perfect one. He has some sense of something. Of course, it's called Ria, then it's called Shmir because it was inaccurate. But he's. Yaakov doesn't have the Ruach yet. It didn't return yet. But he's sort of on his way back. Okay, so he has a sense. The sense is that ya- Yosef is, in fact, the one who's going to supply the food. So I just want to compare this to a, the other story of the younger son who usurps the older brother and supplies the food. And that's by Yaakov who brings the food to Yitzchak, mm-hmm. and he um, proceeds the, ish, the Esav, who's the Ish Sade. Esav is the man of the Sade, and uh, ya- Yitzchak relies on Esav for food. And then Yaakov brings him the food at the critical time when he's going to give the bracha, and Yitzchak said, Re'ei, Re'ach b'ni k're'ach Sade, Shavirche Hashem. So he sees, Yitzchak sees which son has the blessing of the Sade, the blessing of Hashem and the Sade, it's actually the younger son, Yaakov, and he usurps Esau's place. Similarly, Yosef, who was competing with his brothers about whether he's going to control the Sade, because his dream was that, that they're out in the field, and he's the one who control, who, who's, they're all bowing to him in the field. And then in the story, in the beginning of Yosef, the Pasuk says Yosef was Toya Basada, he was wandering in the field, because Yosef has this, has this ambition, has this destiny to control the Sade, and what grows in the Sade. And here, Yaakov sees that, you know what, Yosef is in fact the one the brother who, who's going to um, control the son. And one more thing, with, again, and I can't go into it a lot mainly because I don't understand it, but we noted this in the beginning of Parshish Taldus, where it says that ya- Esau was an Ishsada, and Yaakov was a Yeshiva Holm, which means he's an indoor person. Esau was outdoors, and Yaakov was indoors. And in Parshish Taldus, there's a whole thing about Yitzhak told Esau, go out to the field, and Rivka took from the things that she had at home, the bias. So there's a bi- an indoor-outdoor kind of competition. There's a competition between the sade and the bias or the oil. And that we also saw by Yosef in the base mitzri, the whole focus over there about whether he's working in the bias or working in the sade. And Yosef eventually has to control the sade. That's what happens in Mitzrayim, where we learned that he took the food from the sade. And the last parak. And that's by Yar Yaakov. He, he's seeing which son is the superior one, and specifically the one who's going to ultimately get control of the son. Okay, so those were all comments that were based on previous things, and now we are going to learn Nupsuk. So let's learn Pasuk Gimel inside. By Yehudu Ache Yosef Asara. The ten brothers of Yosef descended Mishbar Bar Mitzrayim. So the first thing you have to ask is, why are they called Achei Yosef? There's no mention of Yosef till here. Yaakov is talking to his children and telling them, we need food. So why does the Pasuk even call them um, the brothers of Yosef? So now, obviously, when the Pasuk calling them the brothers of Yosef, it's referencing the history. They have a history as Yosef's brothers. This, this story is not happening in a vacuum. Their descent to Mitzrayim has to be read, and the Pasuk is having us read it in light of their the tension and the history that they were, that had, had transpired between Yosef and his brothers. Also, furthermore, as um, okay, and also you look in the beginning of Vayeshev. Of course, the pasuk says Yosef recounted his dreams El Echov to his brothers. So there's this, there are these two groups, as it were, that we're familiar with. One is Yosef. Two categories. One is the brothers of Yosef, those with whom he had that whole tension, and the ones who were who were fighting with him about his dreams. So therefore, if, if the pasuk says Ache Yosef, that takes us back 
to the fact that, oh, there's the story of Yosef and his brother about the dreams, and now something is happening that's going to bring that to fulfillment. That's what Ramban says. So by the Pasuk saying, Ache Yosef Asar, it's telling us, oh, remember there was once a story of Yosef and his brothers. It was a competition. And, um, and now, the fact that those brothers, the ten of them, we'll talk about that ten soon, the fact that those brothers are coming is telling us something is progressing in terms of the story of Yosef and his brothers about the dreams. Okay, furthermore, we spoke in the last year, I'm not going to go into the details, but in Pasuk Aleph, Yaakov wanted them to go to the Mitzrayim, and he said to them, Loma Tisra'u, whatever that means. What we spoke then was that they knew that Yosef was in Mitzrayim, so they had, they had a major hesitation to go down to Mitzrayim. Yaakov did not know about that, so he says to them, why don't you just go down? There's like some sort of question there. Why don't you go down to Mitzrayim? They knew something Yaakov didn't know. They knew that they had sold Yosef down to Mitzrayim, and they knew, and they knew that something was fishy over here, the fact that there's food in Mitzrayim, and that they had sold Yosef in Mitzrayim. Yaakov didn't know that. Okay, so now Yaakov is sending them down to Mitzrayim. They know that if they're going down to Mitzrayim, something is happening regarding their relationship with Yosef because they know that Yosef is in Mitzrayim and Yaakov does not. So, there's this conversation with Yaakov and his children. They were hesitant to go, they were hesitant to do something, and he says, Go do it. And the reason why they're hesitant is because they had a history with Yosef, but now that and they know that there's something happening here because they know that Yosef is in Mitzrayim. And now, ultimately, they are reopening that story against their will. So that's the point of saying Achi Yosef. Now, it says the 10 brothers of Yosef, right? But there are really 11. So that's the next possible. Well, there are 10 of them what? Right, but so what does Vayiru Achi Yosef Asar mean? Does it mean 10 of Yosef's brothers or the 10 brothers of Yosef? I think it means the latter, in which case we have a problem. There are 11. Okay, but now let's read the next possible. Ve'es bin yomin Achi Yosef, lo'ishal Achi Yosef Asar. Binyamin, Yosef's brother, Yaakov did not send. Okay, so now we have a problem. That they have two Pesachim who describe Yosef's brothers in two different ways. Pesach Beis says there are ten brothers of Yosef. The ten brothers of Yosef. And Pesach, I'm sorry, Pesach Gimel. And Pesach Dalev calls Binyamin Yosef's brother. Problem? Binyamin is not the only brother of Yosef. Binyamin is. So, yeah, so those who will make the Pesukim go smooth will add Binyamin is Yosef's full brother. Okay, right. But, but, but what is this? How do you explain this, incong- this, this, this tension, this incongruity between Pasuk Gimel and Pasuk Dalit? Pasuk Gimel says there's 10 brothers of Yosef, and Pasuk Dalit suggests that there's only one true brother of Yosef, and that's Binyamin. Okay, so. Now, of course, as we said, the point of Pasuk Gimel is it's taking us back to the old story of, look, there's a story of Yosef and his brothers in the beginning of Yeshev, and that's with ten of them. And Binyamin is the one who is looked at as the brother of Yosef from today's perspective. So that's certainly one aspect of it. Okay? But I first want to talk about this, this ten. Pasuk Gimel says there are ten of them. Now, I just want to focus on the numbers over here. There are ten Ache Yosef, and then there's Binyamin. So there's 10 and then there's Binyam, right? Now, we spoke about in Perik Mem Aleph, Pasuk Lamed Ches. The Pasuk says that Pare said, Pare said after hearing y- Yosef's ability to prophesy, he said, we cannot find, we won't be able to find a person who has the Ruach Elikim, as this person does. We will not be able to find a person who has the spirit of Elikim. And we spoke, that, we spoke about this then, that we had the following two questions. What about Yaakov? Meaning, Pari said there is no such person in the world. We will not be able to find a person who has the Ruach HaLikim. What about Yaakov? Yaakov had the Ruach HaLikim too. The answer is, the Pasuk says that when Yaakov was reunited with Yosef, when he heard that Yosef was alive, Vayichi Ruach Yaakov Avien. His spirit came back alive. Which means, Targum says, he, he became a Navi again. So he had lost his ability to be, to be a Navi. And therefore, Pari said, there's no one in the world besides for Yosef who's a Navi. What about his ten brothers? What? What's the problem? Okay? Yeah, but, uh, sorry, Yosef is a good one. Ruach Ali Kim says Ruach That doesn't have a problem. Now, Chalab Zechem Shishim. What about the ten brothers? What about the ten brothers who also were at least aspiring to be Naviim? 
So we <coughs> spoke, we showed that the Pasuk in Amos and the book <coughs> indicates that, the, as we discussed earlier today, that the brothers lost their ability to have the proper vision by selling Yosef. So by selling Yosef, the brothers became lost the Ruach. So Pari said correctly, no one in the world besides the Yosef has the Ruach of the Kim. Okay. Now, just to remind you, um, the Pasuk says that Pari said we won't be able to find someone like this who has the Ruach of the Kim. And because he has this ability to interpret dreams. We spoke about that um, Daniel, Sefer Daniel, where you have this youth who has the ability to interpret the king's dreams, and because of that, he rises to a high level in the court. There's a lot of parallels between Sefer Daniel and the story of Yosef, as we discussed. And there in Sefer Daniel, and at the Perak Aleph, it says that there was no one, no other one was found with the same wisdom as Daniel. And Perak Aleph, Pasuk from Daniel, says that everything that the king asked Daniel, <laughs> he was ten times as wise as the other wise men of his court. He was ten times as wise. Okay, why is he ten times as wise? Because he can interpret dreams. So Yosef, who was also discovered to be the wisest man, and probably is known as wise, what about his ten brothers? The answer is he is equivalent to ten of his brothers. As Daniel was ten times the wise of the people. Yosef is equivalent to ten of his brothers because his brothers lost their, their spirit of Nevoa. And that's why you know the Midrash of Chazal that Yosef told his brothers, ten of you, ten lights couldn't extinguish one. Of course, one can't extinguish ten. There's this like, there's a numerical competition between who is equal to whom. And that we see from Daniel, who's ten times his brothers, and Pari, who says, no one is like Yosef. What do you mean? There's ten other Yosefs? No, Yosef is equal, equivalent to all ten of them. Like Daniel is discovered to be t- Ten Yodais, ten Yodais. And we showed also that in Shmuel Beis, where it talks about the various Shivatim who were coming after David Amal was reinstated, after the rebellion of Avshalom. So the ten Shivatim said, We have ten Yodais in the king. So you see that the Shivatim are called ten portions. How many portions they have is ten Yodais. So Yosef, even though he's really one, Yad, is equivalent to ten Yodais, like the other dream interpreter, Daniel. That's what we said there. Okay, now back to our Apostle. There's ten Ache Yosef. There's ten of them, right? And then there's also Binyamin. Okay, so now let's, we have some numbers here. There's ten brothers. Yosef is equivalent to ten of them. It's How about Binyamin? What's his numerical equivalency? Any idea? Here you have one born. And we are? But he's, he's Ache Yosef. He's Ache Yosef. So, is he, so maybe he's equal to Yosef. No, but... Is he equal to Yosef, or is he, right? I don't know. Not quite. Ah, so we find by Binyamin, we find two times five. Five twice. We find that Yosef gave Binyamin, the positive case, <coughs> he gave him five times Chamesh Yodais of the meal. Of, uh, they gave him Masais, he gave him portions, and, and Yad in Binyamin was five times the other one. And also when he gave them Khalif Ismolis, Chamesh. So Yosef is ten times the brothers, Binyamin is five times twice. Okay, I'm just pointing that out. What to make of it? We still have to find out. <coughs> I don't know exactly. He also had ten sons. And what? He also had ten sons. Oh yeah, ten sons. Very interesting. Okay, who he named? Who he named for Yosef? Right. He named his ten sons for Yosef. So this is the idea of ten being equivalent <coughs> to Yosef. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Um, fine. So I just wanted to point down this pasuk then that we see that in this Pasuk, because Pasuk Gimel talks about the ten brothers, and they're called Ache Yosef. And then Pasuk Da'al suggests that only Binyamin is called Ache Yosef. <coughs> well, by, in other words, by the Pasuk of setting that up, that there are two groups that are called Ache Yosef, one is the ten, and one is Binyamin, that allows for this possible equivalency between Binyamin and all the rest of them. Because Binyamin is maybe equal to ten of them, like Yosef is. And why shouldn't Binyamin be equal to Yosef? In other words, we could ask a different question. When Par- I, didn't, I didn't realize this question at the time. When Paris said, Hanim Hanim Is there anyone else in the world that has prophecy? So ask, what about Yaakov? Okay, he lost his Nebuah. What about the sh- brothers? They lost it because they sold Yosef. What about Binyamin? So, he is equivalent to Yosef. He's a good guy. We don't have Tzadik. So he's equivalent to Yosef. So why is Paris saying, we won't find such a person? <coughs> and here you, here you have that equivalency because there's the ten brothers of Yosef and then there's the Okay. 
Now, let's talk about Pasuk Dalet. There's Binyamin Achi Yosef, Lo Sholach Yaakov Vesechov. So, Yaakov won't send Binyamin, the brother of Yosef. Now, one thing we know is that from Yaakov's perspective, from Yaakov's perspective, only Binyamin is called the brother of Yosef. That we see in, Pes- in Perik um, Mem, in this Perik. In this Perik, the last Pasuk in this Perik. <coughs> The last parak pasuk in parak nine days, Yaakov said, "Lo yered b'ni imochem, I won't allow my son to go with you." Ki achiv meis v'hu levad nishar. His brother is dead, and he's the only one who's left. So Yaakov treats Binyamin as if he's his only child. Same way he did to Yosef, as we learned in, in Parshas Vayeshe. Yaakov treats Binyamin as if he's his only child, at the uh, rejecting or ignoring his other children. So. From Yaakov's perspective, which Pasuk Dalid, Perik Mendez Pasuk Dalid, from Yaakov's perspective, it says, <coughs> as Binyamin Achi Yosef Lo Shalach Yaakov, as Echo. So from Yaakov's perspective, only Binyamin is, is Yosef's brother because he doesn't, he doesn't count the other, the other brothers, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, now we can have a sense of what's going on in this pasuk. Pasuk Gimel, when it said the brothers of Yosef, the brothers of Yosef, that brings us back to the whole tension between Yosef and his brothers. And the hatred that they harbor towards Yosef. So, Vayer do Achi Yosef Asara takes us back to this competition, to this tension between Yosef and his brothers is being reopened. Okay, now, Yaakov says, I'm not sending Binyamin, who I consider to be Achi Yosef. Why? Because look what happened to Yosef and his brothers. Because there's this tension between Yosef and his Achim, which Yaakov is afraid is going to now be carried over to Binyamin. So Yaakov says, I'm not going to send Loi Sholach Yaakov. This, this Loi Sholach Yaakov, the fact that Yaakov did not send Binyamin, that parallels by Yishlochehu and the Chava Eshloch Achol. In the beginning of Parashas Vayeshev, Yaakov said to Yosef, I'm going to send you the Chava Eshloch Achol. I'm going to send you to your brethren. And by Yishlochehu Me'emek Heaven. So Yaakov sent him. He sent him to his brothers. His brothers ended up being not really brothers, and Yaakov doesn't discount them forever, at least for now, rather. And <coughs> Yaakov learned not to send someone to his brothers, right? So Vayerdu Yaakov Yosef Asara tells us that, um, look, there's this tension between Yosef and his brothers, and now it's starting again. And there's Binyamin Achi Yosef is that Yaakov, who treats Binyamin as the only one who's equal to Yosef, because he saw Yosef as being in a separate category, he's afraid that the other brothers are going to do something to Binyamin, like he maybe suspects they did to Yosef, or as Yosef disappeared, Binyamin might to disappear when he sends him. So Yaakov is afraid of that hatred. Okay. So now, let's just, so I want to just put this together. The Rambam makes this point. In Pasuk Kimo, it says, Vayedu Achi Yosef Asar. There's ten of them. Says the Ramban, Vayedrach Yosef, that brings us back to the dreams. There's a, there's a competition between Yosef and his brothers at the beginning of Vayeshev, and this Pasuk is bringing us back to that. Yosef had two dreams. In his first dream, he says, We were ma'alu 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 etc. Right? So, how many, how many, how many bundles of, of grain were there in the first dream? Shalom, you have an idea? How many bundles of grain? How many alumen? Oh. Like, ten. Ten. Right. The second dream, he said there were 11 stars. But in the first dream, there were ten. There were at least 11. No, it says there were What? No, oh, yeah, well, his in the middle. No, there were ten around him, right? His in the middle and <coughs> ten around him. Why? Because he told it to his brothers who hated him for it. That's not including Binyamin. So the first dream is ten. Those are the Ache Yosef, quote, quote, unquote, are the Ache Yosef that we know from the dreams. So Vayedu Ache Yosef Asara says, okay, dream number one is coming true. Because by Yedu Achi Yosef, Asara, those same brothers that he fought with about the dream that he told them and that they hated him for. And then there was another dream and that's the Achad Asar Ba'ed Ba'es Ben Yom Achi Yosef Lo Yishol Achi Okay, so that's yeah, the next passage. So, so he's trying to that's what Rabban is. He's trying to make the dreams come true, right? Okay? So, but I just want to, but just in terms of what the Pesukim are saying. So by Yedu Achi Yosef Asara, so I asked before like this, are there, <coughs> who are the brothers of Yosef? Is Binyamin the brother of Yosef or are all the brothers of Yosef? The answer is as follows. 
Yaakov does not know that Yosef is in Mitzrayim. So Yaakov says, Well, Lama Tisro, why don't you go down to Mitzrayim? What's wrong? They know something Yosef's in Mitzrayim. So they know that by them going down to Mitzrayim, they are reopening the, the fight between Yosef ve'echov, which is Yosef and his ten brothers. And therefore, they're called Achi Yosef. That's not from, Pasuk Gimel is not from Yaakov's perspective. From Yaakov's perspective, the only son he has was Yosef and now Binyamin, and therefore only Binyamin is the brother of Yosef from his perspective. They are not the brothers of Yosef from his perspective, because they don't count, and he doesn't realize that they are going down to Mitzrayim where Yosef is, and now they're reuniting with Yosef, and something is going to change in that regard. So he, they're all, from Yaakov's perspective, they're discounted, and the only one that's called Achi Yosef is Binyamin, and because he's the brother of Yosef, who got into a fight with his ten brothers, alluded to in Pasuk Gimel, Yaakov learned his lesson, I am not going to send Binyamin like I sent Yosef to his ten brothers. Binyamin achi Yosef, lo yishol achi Yosef. He doesn't send them with it. Okay? But they know that they're the brothers. They know that they're the brothers because they know that by going down to Mitzrayim, they are reopening that relationship, which is called Yosef and his brothers, which we know from Pasha Yosef, which is between Yosef and his ten brothers. So that's why I think that's where the Pesukim, the Pesukim, basically what I'm saying is Pesukim and Dalit are picking up that same tension that starts at Pesukim Dalit. Where Yaakov has one perspective, he says, why don't you go down to Mitzrayim? What's the problem? Without going into the details of what that's about. Basically, there's, a, there's like a question, a debate between Yaakov and his sons. He doesn't understand them. He doesn't understand. He says to them, Lama So there's something he doesn't understand. Why doesn't he understand that? We spoke about because he kn- they know something he doesn't know. They know Yosef is in Mitzrayim. And they know something strange is happening that Mitzrayim is all of a sudden the, the, the salvation for the hunger when Yosef, who was having dreams about the grain, is, was sold to Mitzrayim. So they understand something's up and they're very worried about that. But they can't, they don't want to face Yosef. Yaakov says, well, what's the problem? Why are you guys not going down to Mitzrayim? So as far as Yaakov is concerned, this has nothing to do with Yosef. As far as Yaakov is concerned, the only thing that has to do with Yosef is that there's another Yosef, Binyamin, a replacement for Yosef, who I am not going to do the same thing as I did to Yosef. I am not going to send them with his ten brothers. That's as far as Yaakov is concerned. That's Pasuk Dalit. But the same way there's a tension in Pasuk Dalit and Beis between Yaakov and his sons, that tension continues to Pasuk Gimel and Dalit. Pasuk Gimel was talking about their experience. Their experience was by Yerdu Ache Yosef Asar, because they knew that they're going down to the place where Yosef was, and therefore they're reopening the relation, their brother relationship with Yosef. Yeah, that, that was the, the Nikuda that, to, to solve the, 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 the contradiction between Pasuk Gimel and Dalit. Besides, for the other point I was saying, just the Pasuk is setting up that there are ten, and there's one, and we have to start thinking numerically, or who's equivalent to whom. Um, Yosef is equivalent to all ten, maybe Binyamin is also, and we're going to see these number games happening, and we'll try to figure out what's going on with the five and five. I don't know, five and five equals ten, because whatever, we'll work back with that. Okay, now, I just want to say one thing on the word Asayim. So the Pasuk says that Yaakov was afraid, that's Binyamin, Achi, Yosef, Lo, Shalach, Yaakov, Echo, Ki, Omar, Pen, Yekir, Enu, Asayim. Yaakov was afraid that an Asayim will occur. An Asayim will occur. So what does the word Asayim mean? What is the word, Taich of the word Asayim? It's a very uncommon word. And I'll soon tell you the only other place it occurs, which is very interesting. So Asayim either means um, um, he'll be wounded, something he'll be hurt, or it means death. Targum says that death will occur to him. And some people will say it means like a calamity, a tragedy. Calamity, accident. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, there's only one other place in Tanakh where the word Asayim occurs. It occurs in this story a few times. Yaakov said, I'm afraid of an Asayim, and they repeated him. Fine. They repeated what Yaakov said. There's one other place where the word Asad appears, and that is in Parshish Mishpatim. Perekhof Aleph. Pasuk Chof Beis. In Parshish Mishpatim. V'chi yinatsu anashim. Perekhof Aleph Pasuk Chof Beis in Parshish Mishpatim. V'chi yinatsu anashim v'nogi fu ishahar v'yotsu yilodeha. V'lo yye asay. If two pe- if people are fighting and they hit a pregnant woman and her babies, plural, keyword, her babies, she loses her babies, her fetuses, feti. If there's no asay, then you pay. He has to pay. But if there is an asay, meaning if she dies, okay. So, so <laughs> the story is that that they hit a pregnant woman who miscarried and they have to pay. If there's an Asayim, if there's a death or calamity or however you translate the word Asayim, that's the only other place in Tanakh where the word Asayim occurs, strangely enough, because you would think that calamity is a pretty common, or death is a pretty common, or 
Sun and death. You come in with the issue of preserve. That's only on the face of the curse. If there's a death, meaning if the woman dies, then they don't pay, instead they get killed. So, now it's a very interesting thing that for some reason the story over there is where she is twins. She's pregnant with twins. Because mm -hmm. it says Yilabeh, plural. And the Mechilta says, how do you know it's even if she has one baby? Maybe it's only when it's plural, because Yilabeh. The answer is it says Ishahara, pregnant woman. That's Marba, any pregnant woman. But the Pshuta, the story is written as a, as a woman who's pregnant with twins. I have no idea why. But I just want to draw a very interesting parallel, which is that Rif, Rachel had a baby, and she said, I need to have another baby. And one of her children died, and there's a risk of the other one dying. And Yaakov says, that's an Asan. And in that story, in the story of Ishpatim, pointedly, the, the, if, as long as the woman doesn't die, it's not called an Asan. The two babies die, it's not an Asan. Now, it might, it, it's not necessarily a contradiction, because maybe an Asain is when there's a death that doesn't leave any remnant. Because Yaakov said, Rachel's already dead. Rachel's dead, and now the, ya Yosef, Yosef's dead, and now but Yosef's going, that's the Asain, because the fight, there won't be anyone left mm -hmm. from Rachel. So maybe in that story, if the woman survives, and the two babies die, that's not an Asain, because they still have the woman. Okay? But, fine. It's, I'm not out to ask Kashis. I'm out to show that it's very interesting that Torah says the halacha of, of a woman and her babies, plural, for some reason, and uses the word asay. And similarly, when we, when we have this Rachel, the mother Rachel, and her two children, who are so dear, there's this also, that's the only other place we have the word asay. I, I don't know what to make of it, I'm just pointing out the preference. Okay, I just want to, let's just start the next Pasuk. One comment on the next Pasuk. Vayavayu Pasukei, Perek Meves Pasukei, Vayavayu B'nei Yisrael Meshavar Pasuk HaVa'im so the Pasuk says Bnei Yisrael came among the Ba'im because the Ra'av happened in Eretz Canaan too. And the reason why the Pasuk says Ki Haya Ha'ra'av Eretz Canaan, working backwards, it doesn't tell us earlier that the Ra'av was in the land of Canaan overall. Here the Pasuk is making the point that they came B'Saych HaBa'im, they came with other people. Mm -hmm. In other words, they were coming with the crowds who were coming from the land of Canaan. And the purpose of saying that, I think, so it's one of the first I think it's correct, because Yosem is going to accuse them of being spies. And the Pasuk first makes the point that they were coming among the throngs of people who were coming from the land of Canaan. They were just doing what everyone else was doing. But, um, but yet Yosef select, chose them out and, and accused them of something. Okay, so that's all for tonight. So basically, just to review, it was a little bit quick and different points. But let me just review the main, the main things. So the main Kedusha work that um, Yaakov's vision is this kind of nevuah vision of unscrambling words because it's mm -hmm. parallels the Shvatim who didn't unscramble and Yaakov identified which of his sons is the one who's going to control the Sada and supply food as Yitzchak identified his son and said he's the son who who's, has the blessed Sada okay, those are the two points there and then Pasuk Gimel and Dalet is doing many different things it, number one, bringing us back to Yosef and his brothers to the scene in the beginning of Ayeshev and making us expect that there's going to be some resolution or some continuation of that, which of mm -hmm. course happens very quickly. And it also separates um, the ten brothers and Binyamin, puts the ten brothers on one side and Binyamin on the other side, and gives them a certain equivalency by giving them the same title, because there's this whole question of who is the real brother and who's equal to the rest of them. Yosef stands till now as the one who's equal to all his brothers, but Binyamin is perhaps may be equal to Yosef too, because he's a good guy also, and he didn't do anything wrong. And indeed, we're going to find five and five in the story, which still needs to be explained, I guess, what that's all about. And additionally, the Pasuk, Pasuk Gimel and Dalet are being told from two different perspectives. From the perspective of Yaakov, um, he only has one son, and that's now Binyamin, who he learned not to do what he did to Yosef, which is to send him with his ten brothers. He's not going to do that with Binyamin, he learned his lesson. He's afraid of the Asayin. Asayin is the, the woman who loses her two children and the woman is dead, tragically. That's the real tragedy. That's the real disaster. That's the real death. Um, children dying with the woman still alive is not the death, but here the tragedy of Yaakov, where Rachel died and Yosef and now Binyam might die. That's called the Asayin, like we find the Pasha Shvatim. From the brother's perspective, they are the Ache Yosef Asara because they know that they're going down to Mitzrayim where Yosef is, unbeknownst to Yaakov. So they have one angle and he has a different angle. And by Pasuk Gimel and Dal, using the exact same term, 
of Achi Yosef, it forces us to realize this very point. It forces us to realize that, oh, look, we have two different perspectives. One perspective is theirs, and they're the Achi Yosef, and another perspective is Yaakov's. From his perspective, Oben Binyamin is the brother of Yosef. Okay, that will be all. So he only has one brother, except he has ten brothers.